Here we are again, Jesus Christ Ministries Mission Midweek Meet today, 7th to the 11th, 2012. Another lovely day, and we're we're going to be reading from Old Testament today, Second Kings. If we can go there in our Bibles to start with, Second Kings, and. Uh, We've selected one verse out of there to work with. Others will come into the picture, obviously, down the road, but 2 Kings 4.10, please, please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there, table and a chair and a lamp, so it will be whenever he comes to us he can turn in there. This is talking about the prophet Elisha. And um, catering. Uh, catering for this man on his, on his journey in the Lord. And uh, the Lord shows us all the way through uh, the word. Uh, the power of humility. Humility is, is very powerful and, uh, you know, brings great blessing and advantage to, the, to those who, who possess this attribute mm. of God. The God we serve is, is very humble. And that is because he's very powerful mm. and I've always believed by the grace of God I always be have believed um, that the more wealthier the more wealthy financially a person is the more humble they should be the more powerful and knowledgeable and um, wise a man or woman are, the more humble they should be. And um, this is the way the Lord have it, has it. And it, we just take one look at Jesus, mm -hmm. who came from heaven down to earth. I mean, that's a humble step, going from immortality to mortality. This is a very humble step. And... Um, how many today, you know, um, are content in the world, um, let alone in the, in, in, in the churches? How many are content with a small room? And uh, a bed, table and lamp. How many will be uh, content with that today and, and be humble enough to receive that as their uh, abode. This is, you know, a, a strong question for the days we live in, 2012, 7 of the 11th, 2012. The title of our message today is there's a chair in there and a bed as well. Um... That was an old uh, song on on Plain School, wasn't it? There's a bear, it, like there's a bear in there, in a chair as well. People with games and stories to tell, for children, you know. And it, it, it's reminiscent of the Word of God, you know, that we must become like little children, and, and we must humble ourselves if we want to enter the kingdom. And um, the first word on, on the scripture in 2 Kings 4.10 is please, please let us. I mean, um, this prophet who was Eli Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha, um, he, he was no profiteer. He was no profiteering minister. 
he was he was a man that um, allowed himself to be um, led by the Lord in the Spirit of God. He was a as all prophets should be, men who are under the controlling hand of the Lord. Hey? Um, there's a chair in there and, and a bed as well. Uh, a, a bed, a table and a chair and a lampstand was the consistency of the preparation made for this prophet. It, it wasn't like you see today with the Benny Hins and the Joyce Myers and the Jerry Savells and the Joel Osteens and wife. It wasn't the contracts made up, basically a contract made up with a church in another country saying that if we come and minister in your church, we'll be wanting you know, a five-star arrangement with room temperature, perrier water. We want all the fuel for the jet to be paid in advance. And if we're going to have private sessions of prayer and false prophecy, um, it's going to be a thousand US dollars per head there. I mean, and it just goes on and on, with, you know, with a $200,000 um, personal offering and then you got the offering uh, from the church you know it, it, it's a far cry isn't it yeah. it's a far cry from what most run of the mill ministers require before they will dare leave their creature comforts of the 21st century um, but what more would a true prophet need anyway? I, I always thought that prophets were supposedly spiritual men who have, by the grace and the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, they've been mortified to these things and the things of the world and its demands. That's what I thought. If we go to Proverbs 23 today and we have a look at Proverbs 23... And um, it says in Proverbs 23, 23 uh, verse 1, it says there that uh, uh, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat. If you are a man given to appetite, do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. You're listening today. Mm. You know, you are better off putting a knife to your throat if you're sitting down with degenerated rich people and, 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 and degenerated leaders who are expecting and insinuating that you water the word down for them and anyone else. The true prophet is walks in the blessing of um, being bold enough and, and, and being bold enough to speak the truth as it is, no, whether no one you know, or anyone gives him a dollar. You know, he, he's not looking to that. Uh, the, the true prophet's words are not governed by uh, the offerings of people, financially or otherwise. Whereas the prosperity gospel is totally governed by that. Mm. They, uh, these marketeers, you know, they're, they're, um, American Pentecostalism, is, is totally governed by um, people who are, are paying the bills and paying the, the writing the checks and and these these charlatans have to minister a message and, 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 and bring forth a message that doesn't step on toes and, and it's always you know bless me bless me bless me. God's going to heal everyone. God's going to make everyone financially rich and God's going to take away every bump. 
pimple and lump. You know, and everyone's happy with that. But when the true prophet comes, uh, he he's not even looking for a bed. The true prophet's bed is a stone, you know. The prophet's not looking for the creature comforts and, and the acceptance of men and women. The true prophet doesn't have to write a, a, an honour list for people uh, to say, oh, well, I mean, th this man uh, has written an honour list for these people, so we'll honour them. That's hogwash. We, we don't find prophets writing honour lists saying that you should honour this man and you should honour that man. That's just some desperate person trying to let people know that people uh, uh, are acknowledging him, but you never really hear of the people who mentioned acknowledging the man who's written the, the, the honour list. You never hear of them. You don't even know if, if they know the, the honour list writer, you know? Uh, yeah. Honouring, most of the time it's honouring born-again bastards. So, uh, please let us make a small room, a small upper room, like in, a, in a, uh, an attic, uh, on the wall, and, and let us put a bed for him there, and a table, and a chair, and a lampstand. And the Lord did say that he'll provide our needs. Amen. All our needs. Amen. And he never said he'll provide your wants. He said he'll provide our needs as his people. So as I read this verse, I consider what kinds, what kind of desires would be left in a man that the almighty God of heaven and earth has dealt with right? and you know um, in order to use him as a spokesman and a guide for for people my conclusion is only ever been godly desires godly desires I mean with reference to Moses Prince Moses well Moses was a prince, and he had all the creature comforts you could think of, and more. Very wealthy man. Started off in poverty with nothing, and but very wealthy man. But the Lord done a work in Moses, and and the Lord um, done this uh, with His word. The Lord done it with His the word of His mouth. It came with the calling. When the Lord said to Moses, you tell them I am sent you. See, anything that's lasting or anything that's powerful or anything that's uh, of God is done with the word of his mouth. It's done with the word. He, he called out to Moses and he said, I want you to tell them that I am has sent you. And... He, he left the palace and all its riches just on that word. And and this is the power of, uh, of our humble God, Jesus the Christ. How powerful, hey? Uh, and, um, you know, the Lord obviously is wanting to bring everyone back or even two to this place uh, called humility. And uh, um, we can see that when we look at uh, New York and, and, and what's happening in America. And there's millions of people of all, all, all walks of life being humbled. And their multi-million dollar homes are just being leveled 
and the money is being um, snatched from all peoples in these days. The Lord is, is doing a great humbling um, across the earth uh, because he loves, he, he, he loves um, his creation and his creatures, great and small. Um, the, the Lord, he, he always looks after his, hey? he always looks after his. We go to the writings of the prophet Job in Job 23. Let's go there in Job 23 and see what it says there. Job 23 and the verse is 12. I have not departed from the commandments of Yahweh's lips. I have treasured the words of Yahweh's mouth more than my necessary food. Well, this was Elijah's situation, wasn't it? That he treasured the word of the Lord above his necessary foods. And they're saying to him here, uh, it's these people are saying, to Elijah, please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. Let's prepare for this man of God. God God makes way for his men. Only yesterday I was preaching on the street and a Sri Lankan man came along and this Sri Lankan man um, got out of the car and came over to me and he was so happy and so joyful that he, he I've seen this man before and he's received our, our teaching before, but I see him rarely. This time he, he said, I'm so, I'm so happy to see you here, uh, brother, because um, you're such a blessing. You, you are, you're really out here doing what the Lord has called his people to do, and you're a very wealthy man. And I very, very rarely hear people say that I'm a wealthy man. Most people, large majority, including Christians and pastors, they think I'm some poor, broken down uh, soul. And um, it's because they don't have eyes to see or ears to hear. And, and this brother, he said, please let me do something for you. Please, let me take you and buy you something to eat. Let me, let me buy you a coffee and some food. Please, you have to let me. You know, and and how strange that this is the message today yes. about let us please make a small room for this man and, and just give him the basics. And this Sri Lankan brother, we went to the coffee shop and he brought me a, a latte and a, and a kebab. And I tell you, it took faith to eat that kebab from the Muslim Muslim coffee shop because I was had food poisoning from a kebab at a Muslim shop uh, back in 2008 and ended up having a heart attack. But I stepped out in faith and it was pretty tasty too. And he finished off, and you know, with such joy, this man. He had such joy. He needed prayer. He said, you know, he was so down before he came across me because someone had stolen, uh, ripped him off for $15,000 and he was really, you know, battling to overcome this. And apparently his wife, who was a Hindu, um, took many years to come to the Lord, but she finally comes to the Lord and, and she's on fire more than he is. 
And uh, he said, oh, my wife, she's telling me continuously to uh, forgive this man and to leave him with the Lord. I'm finding it very hard, brother. And I'm praying for this precious brother and, and such joy came on him and such mm-hmm. living thing. And look, we, we fellowshiped for you know, a, a long time there in the cafe and he had to move on. He was working and he just rejoiced. And as I look at the message today, it, 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 you know, just, I recall that um, meeting yesterday and he was so blessed. And he said, you know, I said, look, you're a candidate for our manuscript, Fire and Hammer. And I got that straight off in the mail yesterday, sent it out to him. He should have that tomorrow. And um, a couple of more discs. So the Lord knows what he's doing. If we walk in the Spirit, hey? And, and he really um, showed me that he he loved the Word more than his, his necessary food in his lunch. Uh in in his lunch hour, Mm. hey? The the wonderful saviour that we serve, whether a tent or a cottage, you know, why should we care? He's building a palace for us over there. Though exiled from home, yet still I will see. Oh, glory to God, I'm a child of the King. I'm a child of the King, I'm a child of the King, with Jesus my Saviour. I'm a child of the King. And this precious brother, this Sri Lankan brother, he said he felt so weak about the situation. I said, perfect. I said, because... In your weakness, his strength is perfected, you know. It's by his power. And I explained to him that the Lord said to Paul the Apostle when he had that thorn in the flesh, Paul wanted to be rid of it. Paul didn't have the wisdom, understanding or knowledge to know he was better off with it. He didn't understand that. So the Lord explained it to him. He said, it's not your power, Paul, it's mine. That's what Jesus said. He said, my grace is sufficient. He said, my power is going to do the job, not your power. Your power can't do the job. My power, my grace is sufficient for for all things. By the power of God, under his grace, you go over every obstacle. Everyone. I don't care how big the obstacle. I don't care how weak you feel at the time, how drained, how troubled. I don't care if you're shaking with nerves. Always remember, I said to this precious brother, always remember his power is suffice. Hey? He said, it's to your advantage that I empower you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. There's a chair in there and a bed as well. Hey? He's the provider. He's the provider. So, only godly, godly desires are left in a man... Uh, who's been dealt with with the Lord, right? Who's been dealt with with the Lord? We need to we need to uh, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, because the power the Lord's trying to tell the world and His church and His people, there's power. In humility. Mm-hmm. Right? But, but how many are content 
today with a small room and a small house, a, a tent or a cottage. In today's networking world, where everyone's going bigger and better on a daily basis. Can you say amen? amen. It's all bigger and better. Bigger TVs. And you got, they've got a TV now in, in hardly normals. I mean Har Harvey Normal. A ha Harvey Norman. And old Hardly said, you can't fit it in the room of a small house. In the lounge room. Well, how stupid can you get? Mm -hmm. That's how bigger and better they're going. But all the way along, their heart is still the same black hole. It's still that same degenerated, beaten down program. Right? They need to be reprogrammed. They need to have that Holy Ghost installation. Right? Mm -hmm. Where the Holy Ghost comes and show, tells the poor of the world they're rich in the Christ. So that they too are singing under the anointing. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Christ has done. For us, let's give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Oh, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And I, I thank this Sri Lankan brother. I said, thank you so much, brother, yes. for that lovely cup of coffee. And I said, and you know what? I said, you think the Lord used me to bless you? I said, he used you to bless me. Yes, Not just with a coffee and a kebab. Huh? Not just with a coffee and a kebab. But he blessed me with that witness again that the Lord, the Lord is, is looking out for me. The Lord... He said he feeds the sparrow. Hey? Mm. He's the same one that's feeding me. And I stepped out in faith. And I said, well, um, Lord, I may not have the finances to reproduce an, a, another copy of this, this manuscript. But I, Lord, I know. You want him to have that. Yeah. And you know what? The cost to, to reproduce that manuscript and mail it, the finances were given to me, right? About five minutes after I promised him a copy of our manuscript and that it will be mailed to him ASAP. Amen. Now you tell me, you tell me, huh? You tell me. And you know what? There was a little bit left over again for a pie with peas <laughs> and a can. <laughs> hey, tent or a cottage, why should I care? He's building a palace. For me over there, though exiled from home, yet still I will see. Oh, glory to God, I'm a child of the King, I'm a child of the King. I'm a child of the King, with Jesus my Saviour, I'm a child of the King. Paul the Apostle said, he said, set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. See, this is the prophets of old, the apostles of old, the evangelists of old. They all set their minds above, hey? not on this world, 
not on the things of this world. Their, their minds were heavenward. Okay? Their minds were, were, were heavenward. How much more today should we take on that attitude knowing that the devil is about going about creeping around trying to find someone to devour and drag them away from the road called strength entice them away and put their mind on plastic timber and steel mm -hmm. and bind them up in hopelessness and fear Hey, how much more today do we need this message? And this message, once again, I first preached 11 years ago. Hey, 11 years ago. And uh, it's still fresh today. It's still relevant today. And it's still a blessing today. Hey? As our br Sri Lankan brother said to me, Oh, brother, you have that true riches. There's no doubt about it. How I would love to do the work you're doing. But at the present, I am in my nine-to-five job. I'm waiting on the Lord. I said, brother, you have a desire to do this kind of work for the Lord. Then the Lord brought you to a man that doesn't. Amen. And that's the way of the Lord. Hey? Seek and you will find. Ask and you will be given. That's what the word of the Lord says. Amen. Mm -hmm. Knock and the door will open. So the application of the word leads us and, and surely leads us to the place of humility and the place of provision. The Lord is catering for his people and those who he sends out. The Lord's catering all the time. Mm -hmm. So it will be whenever the prophet comes to us, he can turn in here and there'll be a bed here for him. And there'll be a table. And there will be a chair. Hey? The Lord always makes a way. The Lord calls. He will meet the call. Hey? Just like he did for our brother to get our manuscript. We're not running ahead of the Lord. We just wait on the Lord in, in, in a specialised ministry, in a prophetic ministry, as the Spirit leads. Oh, this stockpiling. Elisha and Elijah sent to one widow and one leper. It was specific okay, for these prophets. It was specific. And um, they were they were on application of the word. They they were seated exactly in the place where the Lord wanted them. Eh? Mm -hmm. Exactly in the exact room, in the exact house, whatever it may be, in the exact suburb. As I said about the the, the man who uh, was running the, the, the house in the, in our neighbourhood, I mean, someone in the house, and he was a seven day Adventist, and someone in the house uh, was dumping rubbish in our yard, but the Lord wanted him to get the message of this ministry. So it was allowed. It was allowed. It, 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 like the ministers, how they were persecuted and how Stephen 
uh, went to the extent of being stoned that they got the message. Huh? Gee, let, let's, let's rejoice no matter what the treatment. Jesus went to, to the cross unto death so we get the message. Huh? And we're getting this message today. There's a chair in there and a bed as well. And when the Lord has done a work in our life, look, we're not really looking for anything else. Just somewhere to lay down. Mm. Hey? Somewhere to maybe cover us from the, the elements and the, the, the rain and the, the heat of the day. We're passing through. He's building a palace. For me over there, though exile from home, no matter where I'm taken, still we can sing, oh glory to God, I'm a child of the King. Hey? We're not poor. I told the, the people in the Philippines, and their brothers and sisters, JTCM in, in uh, Bacalod City, I told them, I said... The first message I had for them was, put your hand up if you're sick and tired of being poor. And they all put their hand up. I said, well, I've got good news of glad tidings. You can be born again today and you can become not millionaires, not trillionaires, but in finite ends. Hey? And the master will start immediately building a palace for you over there. Oh, hallelujah. You should have seen their faces. Well, well, well. I said, but there's a bit of a journey yet. Before you lay hold of that, there's a fight to find. There's a race to run. And a doctrine and teaching to keep. Hey? And cling to. Hey? And I'll cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for my crown. Hey? That's where he done the job for us all. It's finished it on the hill. Far away was an old rugged cross. Oh, the emblem of suffering and shame. How I love that old cross. We're the dearest and the best. For a world of lost sinners was slain. Eh? The price he paid. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. And today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I cling to the old rugged cross. And I, I say to people, hey, don't get bogged down with plastic, timber and steel. Be content with a small room, with a bed and a lamp. Be content and a chair to sit in as you ponder the scriptures. Hey? Be content. Be content with the Christ. Because godliness with contentment is great gain. <coughs> when we're content, when we're content with Jesus, Jesus knows if you're satisfied with him. Jesus knows if, if your heart is saying, oh, I am satisfied, satisfied with Jesus. I am satisfied, satisfied with him. I am satisfied, satisfied with Jesus. I am satisfied, satisfied with him. He knows if he's preeminent in your life. And this is where the blessing and the joy comes when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, we start to become humble. And there's nothing more beautiful than a humble person. Eh? There's nothing more beautiful than a humble person. 
Jesus being the most humble of all. And how beautiful is Jesus. How wonderful is Jesus. I come from heaven to earth. Here I am. I'm ministering in one of the worst suburbs in the, in the city and region. I'm not desiring and, and, and hankering and aiming to to go and live in a nice suburb, as they say, in a fancy, more upmarket suburb. No, 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 no. I'm delivered from that. I'm, I'm free from that. I'm over that. I'm over that hurdle because I'm under his grace. I'm over that obstacle. Because I have a revelation that Jesus came from heaven, from perfection to earth mortality. I have a revelation that it doesn't matter if I'm in the slums of the Philippines, it's still heaven to me. <laughs> I, I rejoiced so much when we were at the mission on the highway, Mansilling Gang Highway, just out of Bacalod City, and all the beggars and the poor would come by, and I just couldn't wait saying, come and sit down, let me serve you. Let, let, let me put some lovely, freshly cooked food in front of you. And I'd call our cook. I'd say, brother, we, we want this and that put before this family and, the, and these people. And get something fresh and cold out of the refrigerator there. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And and let's lay hands on these people. And let's pray for them. And and the joy, the joy was so much in my heart. I I'd sometimes have tears in my eyes. And they wouldn't they couldn't understand why I was crying. <laughs> the joy was so much. The blessing there, the anointing was so much to see these people with no shoes and and no shirts and raggy trousers and just enjoying the meal, the beautiful fried fish and, and the freshly done rice mm. and, and and the the uh, guinamus and, and and the and they're enjoying the the um, uh, the beautifully done uh, chicken feet and sucking on the, the lovely adubo chicken feet and 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 the uh, adubo chicken. Oh, hallelujah! Hey, eh? and, and, and the fried um, uh, eggplant. Oh, they were loving it. They were loving it. Hey. Eh? A tent or a cottage, I'd tell him. Why should I care? He's building a palace for me over there. No exile from home, yet still I will see. Oh, glory to God. I'm a child of the King. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That when the Lord comes, he says, that's one of mine. Come forward, my true and faithful servant. A crown of life have ye won. Hey? Crown of life. There's a chair in there and a bed as well. Hey? And, and as I travelled this country of Australia, this dry and dark land, and I'd go from city to city sleeping in my car and using a bucket as I'd stay in the parks and, and, and wash myself with a bucket and then climb into my car and 
change and then put the billy on and have a cup of tea and I'd go into the city and each city I'd stop and town and preach the word and the Lord would send someone to say, brother, come home and you have a room. There's a bed there and a, and, and a table. One place I stayed at on the Gold Coast, preaching on the street. And I said, Lord, if you want me to stay on, you're going to have to provide. And a man came to me and took me in with a waterfront house. And he said, come out the back here, there's a, a small room. And he said, this room has a table and a chair and a lamp. And he said, you can stay here as long as you want. Well, when I left that place, this man contacted me down the road, some time down the road. And he told me that a person came into that room after I left and laid in that bed and was healed. Wow. That's, the, that's what happened. Mm. And I can give you the contact of that man and he'll tell you. As that person went into that room, another person was staying there, a wayward person that he was trying to help and they were healed. So a tent or a cottage, why should I care? He's building a palace. Our precious Sri Lankan brother, he said to me yesterday, he said, brother, brother, he said, where is your drink? Do you, how do you, do you get thirsty or hungry or how do you get on? I said, I leave it with the Lord, brother. I always leave it all with the Lord. And he will provide because he told me he provides for all his ambassadors who are in chains. <laughs> all. He provides all. Always provides for his ambassadors in chains. Hey? Not necessarily for ambassadors, but ambassadors in chains. And my chains a rice paper, rice paper chains. My restrictions are written. It is written, it is written. My chains are written for me to know my chains. Hallelujah. Huh? Governed by the word of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. His word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. Hey? If we apply the word of God, if we apply the word of God, it will always lead us into humility and provision. Hey? A tent or a cottage, why should I care? And whenever he comes to us, he can turn in here. Hey? Mm -hmm. Catered for. The Lord wants to cater for everyone. The Lord wants to be everyone's shepherd. And if the Lord is your shepherd, you'll have no want. He'll lay you down in green paddocks, not bindi eyes. Jesus said, the great prophet, he said, my food is to do the will of him. Father, who sent me to you and to finish his work. Eh? Jesus never had his own agenda, and nor do I. As Father leads. Eh? Let us lay before the food that doesn't perish rather than the food that perishes. Hey? We, we don't labour for food that perishes. 
we labour for the food that doesn't perish and then all food is provided in the natural, in the spirit, whether it's kebabs, lattes, monies to cover the specific expenses of the prophet's ministry. It's all covered. He put the lot in my lamb. Hey? Eh? Not some uh, anointed of men, but anointed of God. Hey? Eh? Anointed of God and appointed of God. The, the prophet and the people of God should all be labouring for the food that led it to eternal life. But sad to say, we have in the churches worldwide today a gathering of people who rely on and are even governed by carnal passions to their own detriment. Pulpit promotions are the reason for the most of the world's loving in the congregations today. Men who've been placed in pulpits, and even women today, placed in pulpits through brain power and not Holy Ghost power, not God's power. Mm. Eh? Bible college mm. certificate. And if it ain't that, they found themselves there because of some tradition. Not submission to God, but tradition. Oh, my dad was a preacher, so I'm a preacher. My uncle was a preacher, so I'm a preacher. My grandfather was a preacher, so I'm a... That's hogwash. Yes. That is hogwash. Eh? My dad was no preacher. And my grandfather was no preacher. And my great-grandfather was no preacher either. But the Lord handpicks and selects. He provides his own ministers. Hey? The Lord provides his own ministers. He knows who's good for the job. Hey? <laughs> what? They said, Moses, who, who gave you authority over us? Just tell them I am sent you. That's the the word of the Lord. The Lord was saying to Moses, open your mouth and speak my words and they'll know all right who did send you. When a man opens his mouth, you know if man sent him or woman sent him, some Jezebel, well, you know, if Yahweh sent him, the moment he opens his mouth, not some crummy piece of paper with gold leaf. That means nothing to me, especially in these days when you can go to the internet and print off any certificate you want yes. for any prize. Hey? With a minimum, nominal, minimum fee. And say you're this and that, and when you open your mouth, you're just a dunce in the spirit. A ding-dong, claiming to be something that you're not, fooling yourself all the way to hell. And backed up by millions. But what comes out of their mouths are lies. Yes. Prophesying, like Danny Nullia, that... Peter Costello is going to be the next Prime Minister and he's a backbencher. <laughs> he's not a Prime Minister at all. Mm. But God said, which God? Danny Nellia. No, 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 no. That was not from God because I know one thing about the Word of God. If God says, it will be. God said, let there be light and there was light. If God said that Peter Costello was going to be Prime Minister of Australia, John Howard and backslidden Christian prayers, nothing's going to stop that. Nothing. Nothing will stop that. The, the word of a true prophet, mm. yes. nothing will stop it. Absolutely nothing. The words of a true prophet never have to be backed up 
by the prayers of any congregation. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I care? He's building a palace for me over there. Though exiled from home, yet still I will sing. Oh, glory, glory to God. I'm a child of the King. <laughs> As our precious Sri Lankan brother, he said to me, Brother Paul, you're a very rich man. There's not many men like you around, Brother Paul. You are very rich. Today I got out of my car very down. Now I'm very happy. I'm such a happy man. I thank the Lord. This is the Lord doing all this. It's the Lord giving you your coffee and your food, your necessities. It's the Lord covering everything. Oh, praise the Lord. Hey? A precious brother. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hey? There's a chair in there. There's a bed as well. It's so simple. It's child's play. Walking with Jesus. That's where they miss it. They get all complicated and intellectual and, 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 and philosophical and philosophical. They get all this other interactic is happening. The Reverend Dr. Father Mother of the 32nd degree. Or would that be the 32nd degree Mason? They get all this rubbish manhandling in it. You know, all this, the flesh. And, and, and honor list. Where was Paul the Apostle's honor list? Where was Peter's? John the Baptist wrote an honor list. Where, where was it? Where is it written? It was all in the Spirit. Hey? It was all in the Spirit. It was honor from above. The scriptures are clear. He is a, a, a true Jew and a real Jew whose heart is circumcised with the word of God. He receives no honour from men, but his honour comes from above. From above. Not a list. Hey? Not a list. A tent or a cottage, why should I care? He's catering for me. He's catering for his remnant and he's catering for his true prophets. 25 years, 26 years, June 2013, he's catered for me as a minister. He's provided. Even like I said yesterday, I stepped out in faith. I didn't have that money to reproduce. Our... Um, Manuscript, fire and hammer with 12 books all in one. We didn't have the finances to do it in hardcover and, and I didn't have the finances to do it in softcover. But I stepped out and I said, Lord, I know you'd love this man to have that manuscript. Mm -hmm. Five to ten minutes later, the exact amount and a little bit more came as an offering to have that done. <laughs> hey? A tent or a cottage, why should I care? He's building a palace for me over there. Why would I be fighting about real estate? Why would I be fighting about real estate and trying to build myself some shed on a thorny thistle earth. True. Why would I bother mm -hmm. wasting my time when I'm passing through? Hey, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I'm numbered with those of Hebrews who say very clearly they're pilgrims and sojourners passing through, looking for the heavenly land. 
in a heavenly city, even the New Jerusalem. Hey? The New Jerusalem. I come, Father, I come. Don't close that heavenly gate Just to walk the new Jerusalem with you I come, Father, I come The road looks narrow and steep There's hardly room for my feet but to walk the new Jerusalem with you. I come, Father, I come. It doesn't matter, eh? It doesn't matter how rough it gets. It doesn't matter how bad things look, hey? Eh? We still come. We still go. We still forge forward in the name of Jesus. Eh? Amen. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. We have the victory today. In the name of Jesus. Demons have got to flee. Eh? When we stand on that name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before. In that mighty name of Jesus, we have the victory, hey? What sort of fool would come against me? Hey? Pastor Paul Sheen, what kind of fool would come against me and work against me and speak against me when God is with me? Hey? Hey? How foolish they would have to be to come against me. And to work against me. They're best to work with me. Send me an offering that the Lord will bless them. Yes, yes, <laughs> Send me an offering that the Lord may bless you. For those who give to the prophet will receive the prophet's reward. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody send. Oh, amen. And amen. And amen.